So, well, hi there, and welcome to part one of the DC AC, DC AC power inverter tutorial. So, you may have stumbled across an idea when you were playing around with transformers eventually. So, this is one AC AC adapter, and you can plug it into the mains, only 230 volts, and it puts out 12 volts, <coughs> excuse me, in the 100 milliamps. So, maybe you have been playing around with transformers and had an idea, hey, if I put in 12 volts in the 12 volt lead, will I get 230 volts in the 230 volts lead? The closest idea what electronic beginners that aren't too experienced may think is, hey, I have my battery and I have my 12 volt lead and I connect the 12 volt lead to the battery. But note that doesn't work. But, um, but you will notice something every time you touch it, it will produce a short voltage peak. So you can see this light flickering that is connected to the output. Okay, let's think a, bit a little bit further. You know that the mains, at least in Germany, have a frequency of 50 cycles or 50 hertz. Why don't you build an oscillator uh, that makes 50 hertz and instead of your hand switching the uh, wire to the uh, output of this uh, battery, let a transistor switch it to the output of the battery. And you may end up with a similar construction like this. You have the oscillator circuit that makes the 50 to 60 hertz depending on your uh, country frequency and it also has a duty cycle of 50%. That means the signal is either 50% on and for, or it's 50% off. It's not 60%, 40% or 70%, 30%. It's always 50% on, 50% off. Okay, then we have a transistor here and for demonstration purposes I'm using two different power supplies. So this one is the oscillator is supplied with a 12 volt regulated supply and here this transformer is, supply, is uh, being supplied with my uh, re laboratory power supply that you can see here. Now I'll reconnect everything. This transformer is a also a 230 volts to 12 volts transformer but it does have more power than the wall plug one. And instead of our of the uh, small light bulb here, which is just a few watts LED bulb, I'll use this uh, standard incandescent light bulb. It's 25 watts, uh, 230 volts. So I try to hook it up, which isn't of course too easy, as you may expect. But okay, I will hold it with my hand and... Yeah. <laughs> so, the circuit goes as the following. Here is the oscillator that generates now our 50 cycles. There would be a 50 would be holding the wire very, very, very fast to the battery and away, like 50 times per second. On the output, we have the transistor, which is like as if you hold the wire to this uh, battery. Here you can see the schematic. This is the 50 Hertz pulse. Here is the coil and here is the transistor. The transistor amplifies the signal to a higher current level so it can be operated as it's supposed to be. Okay, I now turn on this inverter circuit and you may be able to hear the buzzing from the transformer. Now hook up the light bulb. Yeah, not much happening. But if you are looking at this, there are quite some sparks. They are at least longer than one millimeter. And the rule says, it's just an average rule, that one millimeter long spark means that the output voltage is one kilovolt. So we're getting 1000 volts of a 230 volts transformer. Well, that's weird. Then you may think you can be a clever person and use a Darlington transistor, which is this. A Darlington transistor is basically just like a transistor, but instead of one transistor, there are two transistors in one case. What's the purpose of this? Well, by adding a second transistor, you can increase the gain of this transistor to a really noticeable difference. So if I put in a signal here, what I'm doing is I'm putting in the oscillator signal on base of the transistor. As you can see here, this resistor is just for circuit uh, purposes. It does obviously work, but it also doesn't because this transistor will need like 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps, or even 200 milliamps on base. So it does make a really low resistance between collector and emitter and put out some power from this transformer. So, we would need an additional driver to drive this transistor. And if you are driving this transistor with like 200 milliamps, the overall circuit is already consuming like 240 milliamps with this additional stuff here, uh, just for pretty much nothing. 
So you want to use a Darlington transistor, which is much more efficient. You only put in a small signal and the transistor will act like as if you were putting in 200 milliamps into one of the other transistors. I'm going to rewire the circuit so that the Darlington transistor is installed in this device. In the meanwhile, I'll do that. Uh, I'll, start, I'll talk a little bit. So the circuit that we have now is uh, a coil from collector to plus and the transistor being controlled by like 50 cycles per second oscillator and the signal is a square wave signal. Okay, now I've hooked it up and the next thing that I've done is I decrease the voltage, the supply voltage of the device. I'll tell you soon why. So now this Darlington transistor that you can see here is hooked up uh, to the transformer. So this is the 12 volt winding and this is the 230 volt winding. Now I'll turn on the transformer and you can hear some buzzing. And now I'll hold the lamp again. Of course with 3 volts nothing will happen, but look at that. Now I'll increase the voltage to like 5 volts. Ah, it's glowing. Interesting. So, okay, now I'll turn up the, vol uh, the voltage. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll turn up the voltage to 12 volts, which is here. 12 volts. So, I'm putting in 12 volts on the 12 volt side of the transformer with 50 times a second, 50 cycles. And I'm expecting on the output to have my 330 volts AC. Well, I won't make a spark gap now. I will attempt to connect this light bulb directly to this uh, circuit. And I soon uh, will also tell you why I haven't connected my meter on the output of this device. So now the lamp should be connected, or at least it should be somewhat connected. Ah, there's still a little uh, gap between the capacitor and the lamp. So what I need to ensure is that there is sure contact from the capacitor to the lamp, so it's lighting up. Let's try it. Ah, 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 oh, that's, that's sparking. It's sparking and arcing. It seems to be a short circuit or something. It's hard to do. I, I, I just would need one of these E27 sockets, then it probably would work. So there it goes. So see the brightness of this light bulb? As you can see, it lights up. But I can tell you it looks on camera brighter than it actually is in real life. So it's just dim, it's very dim. It does light up maybe a third or so of the brightness that it usually has. But look at that. Look at the current consumption. So you are nearly at 3 amps. Of course this, uh, yep, I can feel it, it's getting hot. So the current is decreasing since this transistor needs a heatsink and it's getting really hot and therefore the inner resistance seems to increase. But anyway, let's say we are having nearly 3, three amps consumption. So we are putting 36 watts, 36 watts into this transformer to get this light bulb lit up a little bit. That's pretty much pretty bad. <laughs> so the next clever idea would be to replace this uh, transistor with a MOSFET. The advantage of a MOSFET is that it has similar connectors like base, emitter and collector, although they sound different, but it's basically like a transistor but with much lower inner resistance. And much lower inner resistance on the uh, transistor would, meet, would, I'm sorry, would mean that we have much more power on the transformer. So I'll do that. I'll now change the Starlington transistor to a power MOSFET, which can handle quite some amps. So I'm pulling out the power MOSFET. So now I've changed it. So what we have now would be like this. So don't bother about this one. So we have a MOSFET here, MOSFET with the coil. This is the 12 volt coil and the 230 volt coil. And we go with the square wave signal on the input of the MOSFET. And now I'll turn it on. And you can see the light bulb is brighter you can't really see it very well on camera, but look at the current consumption. I also don't want to do that too long because the MOSFET eventually gets hot, although it can take more than that amperage. Anyway, as you could see, the light bulb does light up, but I can tell you it's far away from the brightness that it should usually be. 
it's like between one half and one third of as bright as it should be. And rem remember, this is a 25 watt light bulb and we are putting in 36 watt or even a little bit more than 36 watts of power to not even light this light bulb up at full brightness. Why is this happening? I mean, the basic idea that I've demonstrated previously with the battery and the power supply to step up the voltage ain't that bad, but obviously it doesn't work. Well, I can tell you why. So here are two windings. There's the secondary winding and here is the 230 volts primary winding. And what I, when, when you are doing that, like I did it to them for demonstration purposes, is what happens is when this transistor gets conductive, the coil inside this transformer stores energy. It converts the electricity, if you want to call it like that, into a magnetic field, which then is stored into the core. For example, here is another transformer. This is the metal core. And here you also can see the windings. So it gets converted into a magnetic field, like an electromagnet. Uh, then you, uh, your transistor switches off again, and suddenly the magnetic field collapses. The, uh, the, the magnetic field in inducts a voltage in the coil as a result of the collapsing magnetic field. And it inducts a voltage in the primary coil here, and also it inducts a voltage in the secondary coil here. And since the magnetic field, uh, I think that's how it works, attempts to hold itself stable, the more it's, uh, it's on the beginning making a very high voltage and then the voltage is dropping. So the problem is we're just having a pulsed DC. We do not have an alternating current, we just have pulsed DC, pulsed DC current. That means that it's always switching the power on for a short time, switching it off, and that will cause some magnetic field stuff in this transformer, which then causes the high voltage. I think with the MOSFET and the transformer, we could even make a like five kilovolt arc, which would be pretty bright and even eventually hot enough to melt down the contacts. But I'm not, no, I'm not doing this because if you do this, your transformer might fail due to an insulation breakdown inside. And if this one fails, <laughs> you pretty much can throw it away. So, uh, and also the MOSFET might fail because not only on this coil, you have a high voltage, also on this coil, <coughs> excuse me, uh, if you uh, have a MOSFET with like 100 volts and you leave this one open circuit here, for example, leave it open circuit, there will also be like around 100 volts or even more on the prime, on the secondary coil, on the 12 volt winding. It's like 105, 110 volts going back into the MOSFET. And the MOSFET will take it for a minute, will take it for five minutes, but some minute will fail. And what it usually does is makes a short circuit. So as case of that, you have a short circuit and also your transformer will fail after a while. So this circuit can be improved by adding, for example, a capacitor here. But overall, these circuits, where you have just one transistor, as I said, just see this side, uh, where you have just one transistor with a coil from plus to the uh, collector or drain, uh, this is an inverter that will give you a high voltage and a low uh, uh, amps or power milliamps uh, current. Of course, you can also make, by doing this uh, way of circuitry, you can also make an efficient inver inverter, but you need to have a, a, another turn ratio. I mean, you would have less uh, turns on the secondary, on the 12 volt windings, and you would also have less, many, much more, much less turns on the 230 volt side. And usually you would also use a ferrite transformer, and not a conventional one, one like this one. So that's about uh, inverters. So if you see one of these uh, simple inverters where you have like 50 hertz score wave and just one transistor with one coil in the collector, you can build it, but definitely don't expect much of it. It's very inefficient. It does obviously work, but not really the way you want. And also you don't want like three or four kilovolts on your devices that are rated for 230 volts. And now I think you also see why I haven't connected my meter to this because I don't want to have five kilovolts on a meter that can measure like thousand volts. So, okay, that was the first part about DC to AC power inverters. Best regards, Stefan.